Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast Review. You guys have voted, and your voice has been heard. Today's race review, or race review, uh, Diecast Review will be of the Alex Bowman 2020 Fontana race win. So, uh, I have yet to take this out of the box. I did take the tissue paper off and stuff and leave the box at work. I didn't really want to have to drag it all the way home, and then you just got to drag a bunch of empty boxes back, so I try to keep them, uh, keep all the empty boxes there because uh, I do reuse those boxes when I ship other ones out. So, anyway, I, the tissue paper is off, but I have yet to pull it out of the box, so we're going to get to see uh, the car for the first time and all the stuff with it. So, standard Elite box, and it is one of 250. That's what we know so far. So let's pop this baby out and take a look at it. So, first things first. Um, oh, it's stuck. Hold on, let me get the card and junk. So many, so many things in here. Uh, there it is. I knew the winner sticker had to be in there. Okay. So now that I got that box out of the way, let's go ahead and take a... So, I'm just going to throw this out here quick. I'm going to rant a little bit in this one, but look at these. I, I don't know if you guys are having this issue too, but none of my 2020 boxes seem to stay shut. They do this. So, I don't know if that's a new box design, but I hate it because it's literally happened on a lot of my 2020s. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but a, as I said, a ton of the 2020s have had this issue. So, here's the new... Um, oops, dropped it again. Here is the new... 2020 race win card, Alex Bowman, Auto Club 400 winner, uh, Fontana, California, March 1st, 2020, right before the pandemic. I think there was one race after this yet. Time of race, two hours, 37 minutes, seven seconds. That's a pretty good time, two and a half hours is about what you want. Started third, uh, 200 laps, 400 miles, three cautions for 13 laps. <laughs> yeah, three cautions for 13 laps is awful uh, as far as a really slow race. I'm glad this track is getting turned into a... Uh, short track don't get me wrong it, it did put on a good show um back when they were really really fast cars um but at the end of the day it, it was basically another michigan where you just it, it, the racing was never very good i guess um it just never stayed consistently good i um let 110 laps so let over half the race and won by 8.9 seconds so just ran away with it um but yeah, as I said, uh, this this Fontana track has yet. I mean, they they had a wild finish with a couple of green white checkers. Obviously, the Logano and uh, Hamlin one was pretty good. There's our race win sticker with the black and white. Um, but overall, it's like uh, it, it just wasn't. Um, there's the elite card as well. Um, it the the racetrack there just wasn't putting on a consistently good show. Um, you know, there are tracks that I know people kind of hate on, like the the half mile and a half. Um, but at the end of the day, the fact is, Chicago puts on a decent show. Kansas puts on a decent show. Vegas wasn't bad these the last year and a half. Charlotte's been pretty solid consistently. Um, you know, there's a few tracks that have done really, really well. Um, but, you know, they all kind of get a lot of hate, basically for Kentucky and Texas. Those are the only two that are really, really bad. I think. Am I missing one? Mm, and Atlanta has had its struggles, but yeah, not bad. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Uh, we have got uh, Confetti City over here. Um, yeah, all right, let's get this down here a little bit closer. So, I'll have to get this off the base here soon. But we'll do it while it's on the base here just because it's easy to, easy to see. So down the left side, you can see all this confetti here. Um, the 2020 Camaro front end, number 88 skirt down here with all the little rivets there you can see all the confetti on the back cincinnati and um you can see how his uh, burnout did rip the fender again how uh, oh and we do have a flat spot on that tire if you can't see it right there there is a flat spot on the tire i'll have to unscrew it from the base i'll show you but um so we do have a, a little bit of a flat we have a flat tire and a uh, a bent up rear fender here we got our ethanol ring valvoline microsoft up here as well uh onto the back got cincinnati camaro goods Dot com. There's our fuel cell in the back and our perfectly accurate spoiler. Um, go to the right side, we get a chewed up right rear tire. So his he blew the rear the rear corner panels out of both his wins so far, so I'm happy with that. Um, but we get a chewed up tire. Cincinnati, Valvoline, Microsoft, and then as I said we do have the uh, the bent up rear fender again. There's our skirt with a little bit of a, I think it's a donut mark, I can't really tell, but there's a, some marking down there um, on the skirt. Kind of some scuffed up marks. You can see the 88 with a couple little rubber particles that kind of bounced off there. And then our rear window there with some of the extra decaling right around there. 
Um, rivets all the way to the front. Um, then we get over here to the front. Got the Chevy Camaro ZL1 front end. Um, or I think it's 1LE now. Anyway, you can see a couple pieces of tape on there. You can see how the grill, the opening is all on the left side um, with the way it's taped. Oh, the DIN's underneath. I can't show you that yet. Um, let me get, let's go ahead and two things. There's our roof flaps. Um, that's also kind of a neat thing that I don't think had been uh, noticed was the, um, there we go, uh, the the gray roof. It's kind of an odd color. It's this little gray kind of color here. So, um, And then let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. Oh, it's a good tight-fitting hood. I'm not going to be able to get that open without a little help. Um, yeah, that's a really good fit. I'm going to go ahead and take it off its base right now because I have to do that anyway to get the hood open and take a look underneath but um, yeah as I said it's very very tight fitting hood which I'm always extremely happy about so um, that's kind of one of uh, one of the benefits there we go all right din number by the way is 214 on this die cast there we go I just got it popped open Maybe it's starting to give me a struggle. Come on now. There we go. So for some reason, I was having some, I was having some struggles getting the thing to open up. But there is the uh, engine detail inside. Um, the only thing is that we have the silver uh, valve covers. There's a bunch of little holes in there for what used to be the plug wires and a couple little hoses they've taken all that out so you still have an engine um in terms of like from underneath it's all still got the components in there but we are missing some of the detail i said din number 124 there's that chewed up tire on that corner panel there um but overall it's it's a honestly it's a perfect match to his other race win um you know paint schemes different which is nice but the Kimpetti is um a little less on this car but the rear end on both of them has been, uh, you know, the burnout has taken out the corner panels on both of them. There's confetti all over both of them. So, um, they, you know, they're a, they're a good set to go together for uh, his first two race wins. But um, now we're trying, it's time to get into the ranty part. Um, I'm not going to rant for too long on this um, because I have rant, <clears throat> ranted on it in the past. But the completely accurate spoiler here was a sarcastic joke. Um, it's supposed to be the tall spoiler. Um, let me pull up this John Hunter Nemechek car I got sitting right here. There we go. And this is what that spoiler should look like. You know, about that tall, clear top, that kind of thing. Well, they um, announced that they were going to use the short spoilers on the Chevys until they were gone so they could use up some of their old stock. I can appreciate that if it wasn't on the race wins or other cars that ran on non-short spoilered tracks. Um... Because it sounds like what they're going to do is put short spoilers on every single car, and then the minute they're out of them, they're just going to do the tall spoiler instead of trying to be accurate. So we're going to have a Bristol win with a sh tall spoiler, and we're probably going to have a Phoenix win with a tall spoiler, but we got this car with a short spoiler. So, um, again, I'm not going to rant too long on this. I know they're doing their best, but the, the thing that is so frustrating is we know they have the tall spoilers, and we know they have some short spoilers. Just put the right one on the right car is all I'm asking. Um, because again, I, I understand they're trying to save some money and I can appreciate it to one point, but the thing that frustrates me is it's, this is not a money saving deal. This is just using some of the other stock first and then going back to these on the short track wins. So again, it's frustrating. Um, anybody that's kind of liking their detail more accurate, I know it's frustrating for them too. Um, but I'm not going to go super crazy on them because, again, I understand it from one point, but it also would be nice if, um, you know, some of the people making these decisions were collectors themselves and understood um, how easy some of these details would be to, f to just flip. I mean, again, we know they have the talls and we know they have the shorts. Just put them on the right cars and, you know, you earn a little bit of brownie points with, with the, the die cast community. So... Um, that's my only uh, critique on it. Overall, um, it is a really nice car. I said it's got this flat spot right there on the tire, so you get a flat tire uh, and a chewed up rear end, which is kind of neat. But uh, anyway, that'll pretty much wrap up this diecast review. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Subscribe if you're new. Share the video to uh, other Bowman fans out there. Uh, but other th other than this, that will wrap it up. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next diecast review.